going on guys? It's Finest Fellas here. I hope you guys are doing okay. So on today's video, I wanted to talk about a few Viking legends that I would like to see added to the Viking hero roster in For Honor. Now, I actually had a lot of difficulty with this one, choosing the Vikings that I wanted to see, because the Viking roster is pretty well rounded so far with the types of Viking raiders and soldiers that you would have seen in that time. For example, I've been watching a lot of the TV series Vikings and, of course, The Last Kingdom. And as I've studied these TV series, I try to think, ooh, you know, which one do I want to see here? Or that would be cool to see in For Honor. And then realizing, of course, that those sorts of soldiers and raiders, you know, they already, they're already covered in the current roster. So instead, what I should be doing is not covering heroes that I want to see in the roster, but instead, Viking Legends. Now, these legends have been chosen very carefully, however heavily inspired by the TV shows. Here we go! Now, just a quick reminder, guys, that all said here is shrouded by rumor and legend, so please take any of these facts with a pinch of salt, okay? And, of course, these are just my opinion, so please, please don't freak out in the comments section and saying, Oh, but that would never fit into For Honor. It's just something that I want to see off the top of my head. Here we go, guys! First up today, guys, is Ragnar Lodbrok. Ragnar Lodbrok is a truly larger-than-life hero from our great Viking Age. Though not as well known as the characters such as Beowulf, Rolf Kraki, and Sigurd, he was a man of adventure and warrior supreme. Ragnar, who of course was a pagan, is said to have loved to attack the Christians on their holy days, thereby catching them off guard and in their churches. Ragnar, in the legends, is said to have been descended from Odin himself, and as are we all really actually if we believe that Odin is the Allfather. He is said to have married the Viking Largatha, and later the Swedish princess Thora. Through numerous Viking raids, he gained power and wealth by the 840s. That's 840s, guys. Was a prominent warrior through, according to the sagas, not gaining an acclaim of his son Ivar the Boneless. In 845, Ragnar led a daring raid up the Seine River to the city of Paris. The Christian king, Charles the Bald, pulled together his countrymen into an army, and then divided them to protect both sides of the river. This was a major blunder. Ragnar, an experienced warrior, knew all too well to deal with the strategy like this. He attacked with the smaller force defeating it and took 111 prisoners. He then hanged these prisoners in full view of the other half of Charles' army to demoralize them. And this worked. It, he was easily uh, sailed up the Seine River and sacked Paris. And it was on Easter Sunday, March 28th, 845. Charles the Bald, who was a coward in my opinion, decided to fight Ragnar no longer and offered him 7,000 pounds of silver and to leave his lands in peace. And he let Ragnar keep the plunder he had taken in Paris. This dangled, which Charles believed would stop the Viking incursions to his lands. Actually gave Viking raiders even more reasons to attack his major cities and hold them for a ransom. Our Viking raiders took full advantage of this fear and returned to France for more dangled and even sacked the city of Rouen. This led ultimately to the Northmen being given land on the coast of France in exchange for protection against other raiders. The settlement of course became known as Normandy. So now that we have a small history of Ragnar Lodbrok, let's talk how he would fit into the game. I think that Ragnar would make an excellent hybrid. Ragnar armed with an axe and a shield would be very similar to our gladiator. He would have bash mix up with his shield and have great quick attack and deserve a mix up with light attacks. Now, as unbalanced as this sound, he would still be a great addition to the roster with a unique legend behind him. You know, quick, swift attacks with the axe and zone attacks that could include the axe and shield, obviously, contacting upon the opponent, possibly knocking them to the ground, as was the favorite of the Viking Raiders. They had a martial art that would allow them to grapple, so lots of grappling moves, so the guard break could be worked into this, and obviously throwing them onto the ground, which is similar to what the Highlander does. He grabs his opponent while in Don Magras, throws them to the ground, which allows him a very heavy attack. Now, Ragnar could be gifted such a, uh, such a move like this. He could grab his opponents, throw them to the ground. He could throw in a few light attacks, perhaps. I really want to emphasize Ragnar's light attacks. Now, watching through these TV shows, Ragnar is quite swift, his attacks. He doesn't seem to to prolong his engagements. He likes to parry and then follow up with very swift attacks with his axe and sword. So this is the kind of gameplay that I want to see with this character. Next character up, guys, is Bjorn Ironside. Bjorn's most famous accomplishments was his semi-legendary raid to the Mediterranean, which began around 860 AD. Following in his father's footsteps, Bjorn and his brother Vitzerk raided northern France. 
however. At the end, instead of returning to Norway upon hearing of the rich lands of the Mediterranean, Bjorn and his brother decided to venture onward. The two brothers were, well, they raided up the Spanish coast all the way around the Straits of Gibraltar and all the way up into southern France, where they spent the winter. In the summer of the following year, Bjorn proceeded unto the city of Pisa, which he duly sacked. Whilst in Pisa, Bjorn heard of the holy city of Rome lay within his reach, only a short journey inland. Aware of the riches that had been plundered from various abbeys in England and France, he anticipated the vast wealth that could be plundered from the central city of Christendom. Unfortunately for Bjorn, he had been misled as to how far away Rome actually was. When his army reached the town of Luna, they thought that, the, they, thought that they had reached the Eternal City and began a siege. However, in Luna, the Vikings had found their match and the siege looked as if it would turn into a pro protracted engagement, like an, a prolonged engagement. Eager to get inside, Bjorn fabricated an incredible deceit. Bjorn let it be known to the Bishop of Luna he had died but had a converted to Christianity on his deathbed and wished to be buried in consecrated grounds inside of the town. Not willing to deny Bjorn a Christian burial, the Bishop gave permission for Bjorn's body to be brought in by a small honor guard. However, once his coffin was laid in the church, Bjorn astounded the assembly clerics by leaping from the coffin, which he and his honor guard hacked a bloody path to the town gates, opening them and allowing his army to sack the town. You know, that's actually really cool because in the TV series, Ragnar does something very similar in Paris, alright? But now that we know a little bit about Bjorn, uh, now that we have a short history on Bjorn Ironside, I'd like to talk about who he's going to fight. Obviously, what you guys are watching this video for to know how they would fit into the game. What I'm going to do, guys, is throw up some footage of Ragnar and Bjorn Ironside in the TV series Vikings, just a short 30 second clip, so you guys can see them in action, so that you can see how swift their attacks are, okay? I want to focus on Bjorn, I want him to wield two swords, you know, like the Peacekeeper has, although she has a sword and a dagger, I want Bjorn to have two swords, and I want him to kill rapidly and with rage. I want Bjorn to play either like an assassin or a hybrid role, as he would be very he would be making very excellent use of the parry system. I would like to see how his blocks would be rewarded with lightning fast attacks, similar to Ragnar. I was saying with Ragnar, I want his his guard breaks to be followed up with very swift attacks. With Bjorn, I want to see his parries followed up with really fast attacks. So obviously it puts a lot of emphasis on how you would use both characters. If you're like me and you're just starting to get into the parry system and you're starting to really, really figure out how to use parries and punish enemies with your parry system, Bjorn would be a perfect choice for this. Two swords, parry your opponent, swift light attacks, just like a Berserker's infinite chain mix-up or an Aramusha mix-up. He could have a, a swift light mix-up as well, just like the Aramusha. Hey, heck, if the Weeaboo Samurai get it, why don't we get it in the Viking? Come on! Alright guys, the third and final character that I want to see in the Vikings roster, in the Viking Legends, is of course Ivar the Boneless. Now, historians have been arguing over what his nickname actually means about him. One theory is that it's an indication that he was a very physically capable soldier. Maybe his flexibility led people to jokingly call him boneless. The other more popular theory is the complete opposite. In 1949, the Danish historian Nud Seedforf put forth the idea that Ivar the Boneless suffered from brittle bone disease, that he was unable to walk and even needed to be carried on top of a shield that his position as a son of a king gave him the opportunity to live, whereas others within his condition would not be able to. But Ivar the Boneless was said to be a ferocious warrior who was known for his involvement in battles. It is possible that he suffered from a slightly less severe condition, where he was unable to walk but could still use a longbow, allowing him to engage in battle. Now, as a warrior, he served as a warrior in Denmark, where he was said to lead an army of berserker warriors. A berserker warrior is a type of viking warrior who were notorious for the rage and fury that took into battle with them. Their trans-like fury was said to strike fear into their enemies, often causing them to drop their weapons and flee. To be able to lead these kind of men, Ivar the Boneless would have needed to be an intimidating leader, and he was often to be described as one. He was strong enough to use a bow and arrows for more heavy and damaging than a regular soldier. He was described as a towering over his opponents, as more of a giant than an actual man. This would seem to harm the theory that he was disabled. You know, having to be carried on top of a shield, you know, doesn't sound that intimidating to me. 
So knowing that this man was a leader of Berserkers, I would actually recommend that this character use two axes very, very similar to our Berserker. But what would be different to the Berserker that we have is not only being larger in size, say maybe the size of the, the Raider or Warlord, is he would be a lot slower than our Berserker. I want Ivar to have a brute strength damage model. You know, similar to the Shigoki, when he charges up that charged heavy attack, smacks you across the arena, and you know, you've got like maybe a bar and a half left of health from full health. I want Ivar to be like this, okay? Now, what would be really cool about his damage model is it would be his heavy attacks that would cause this much damage, you know? And if he was to use any kind of mix-ups, I would like them to be heavy, mix-ups, maybe some guard break mix-ups, because that's what the Vikings really are all about. They're about grabbing their opponents and slashing them apart. So I want Ivar to be a heavy character. Not a hybrid, not a vanguard, and definitely not an assassin. I want him to be a heavy. It would be really, really cool to see this berserker type gameplay as a heavy character. And what would be really cool, just to put on the, the, the legend that he was disabled, maybe give him a severe limp, or something like this. In the TV series, Ivar equipped himself with these, ooh, what would you call it, not um, stilts, but they would be supports for his leg. He had the blacksmith form supports around his leg so that he could hobble around, and he has seen in the later episodes actually walking. So maybe put a limp on the character, that'd be really cool. And apart from that, guys, that's what I want to see for the Vikings. Like I said, I had a lot of difficulty coming up with ideas for this, mainly because the Viking roster is pretty well-rounded. All the characters that you would that you would see in the TV series, for example, they're all covered. You know, you've got the Warlord, which is most of them with the shield and broadsword. The Raiders definitely covered by Rolo, you know, in the TV series Vikings. It's very difficult, very, very difficult without, without adding bow units. But I think that these guys would make an excellent addition to the Viking roster, and I hope that you guys all agree. So guys, what you think down in the comment section, all right? Drop me a comment, let me know what kind of warrior that you would like to see in the Vikings roster in year two of For Honor, all right? Until then, guys, that's the video, that's it. Leave a like, please subscribe to the channel if you're new. And until then, guys, my name's Finest Fellas, I'm your host signing out for now. I'm gonna see you all later on the battlefield. See ya!